Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I am Joseph F. Ulsis, Addiction Master on most social media. Today I'm going to be talking about the Artemis One. As some people may know, the mission has been scrapped for now. It's going to be delayed in this window of opportunity. And I was excited and I thought, hey, might as well do a podcast on it. So I hope my crack team of staff got the right websites and <clears throat> in any case, I am a huge nerd when it comes to this stuff, the space exploration and all that stuff. But, you know, a part of me always has this argument of, well, in my brain, I guess, about shouldn't we be taking care of people here? Like, why are we spending millions or billions or whatever it is on space exploration? And I think there's a good argument for both sides. But let's just say I can't, you know, control the nerd in me the wonder and awe at the universe and so let's get that out of the way now this was I, i'll read um the artemis overview and uh, a website about the why they scrapped it as always i'll put the links in the description if anybody uh, is interested so i think in a nutshell the artemis one and it's uh progressive whatever um you know i think their mission is to go to mars eventually right so the moon and then mars i always thought why not build a station on mars like wouldn't you wouldn't it be easy to just lift things off of mars and stuff hopefully maybe that's what they're doing but in a nutshell we're going to be trying to go to mars and uh do our thing there which will <laughs> is another argument or debate i guess to have now this is from the NASA website. It's the Artemis One Overview. Artemis One, formerly Exploration Mission One, will be the first integrated test flight or flight test of NASA's deep space exploration systems, the Orion spacecraft, Space Launch System (SLS) rocket, with the newly upgraded Exploration Ground Systems at Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The primary operations goal of the mission is to ensure a safe crew module entry, descent, splashdown, and recovery. In addition to sending Orion on its journey around the moon, SLS will carry 10 small satellites that will perform their own science and technology investigations, the first in a series of increasingly complex missions. Artemis 1 will provide a foundation for human deep space exploration and demonstrate our commitment and capability to extend human existence to the moon and beyond prior to the first flight with crew on Artemis 2. Artemis 1 is foundational to the space economy, fueling new industries and technologies, supporting job growth, and furthering the demand for highly skilled workforce. Men and women in all 50 states are hard at work building the deep space exploration systems to support missions to deep space. NASA Prime Contractors Aerojet Rocketdyne <laughs> Boeing, Jacobs, Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman currently have over 3,200 suppliers contributing to the milestone achievement that heralds the success of America's human spaceflight program. Now NASA's got the site, it's got all the um, um, you know, links you can hit, um, going to Mars, and this is going to be an unmanned test flight, and like I said, I was, you know, I got excited for it, I'm not driving down there, and people do that, they go to watch these things, and it's massive, it's got to be awe-inspiring. One of the moments that really caught my breath was, I was I think I was driving ambulettes, uh, wheelchair people to their doctor's appointments and old age homes. And I pulled over around the Belt Parkway, and there was this big jumbo jet with the space shuttle on top of it. And I gotta admit, my breath caught. I was like, just seeing it, like, it almost felt like I could throw a rock or a a hardball, it was that close. And I'm not sure, I guess you can do the investigation sleuthing and 
find what date it was that it happened. But oh, and just in general, um, the new web telescopes. I did a podcast on it. All this really captivates me. It it's my spirituality, if you want to call it that. And the website will show everything on the trajectory, what they want to do with the moon, going around it, um, like that just explained. This was supposed to be, you know, the first step. We we're going to eventually get to Mars and have a routine there, too, which would be amazing. I've been looking at all that stuff. You see sunsets and the, they turn the uh, Mars quake stuff into, like, sounds. It's just I could watch this stuff for hours, and I do, actually. Now, getting into the concerns with the launch, uh, it was delayed. So now I'm going to go to a different website. I think it's, like, USA Today. And um, I'll read through this. You know, I usually read word for word, and then maybe I'll throw my two cents in. But, as I said, I'll throw the links in the description. So this is about, uh, the, the title is, uh, the headline is, NASA's Artemis 1, Technical Issue Scuttle Saturday's Second Launch Attempt for Moon Mission. And it's by Mike Snyder and Orlando Mayorquin. Hmm. Hope I said that right. Saturday brought another launch scratch for the Artemis 1 mission. Technical issues caused delays on Saturday and eventually robbed spectators in Cape Canaveral, Florida, and around the country, of something Americans haven't seen in more than 50 years. A launch to kick off a NASA program to send humans to the moon. A similar situation unfolded during the first launch attempt on Monday, August 29th. The space agency's attempt for a rescheduled launch of the crewless Orion capsule on Saturday afternoon was first halted at about 9 a.m., Eastern Time. As engineers began attempting to fix a hydrogen fuel leak in the engine section at the rocket's bottom. When the launch team could not successfully stop the leak, NASA officials scrubbed the Saturday liftoff at about 11.20 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The NASA rocket had been set to launch the Artemis 1 mission on Monday from Florida Space Center the same launch site that saw the Apollo mission send humans to the moon in the 1960s and 70s. When that attempt was delayed, NASA aimed for Saturday, which had a favorable weather forecast for the next launch attempt. Artemis 1 is the first in a series of missions over the coming years with the goal of putting astronauts on the moon again and lay a foundation for sending humans to Mars, NASA has said. Why was Artemis 1 launch scrapped? Launch director Charlie Blackwell Thompson What? <laughs> launch director Charlie Blackwell dash Thompson and the launch team were faced with another hydrogen fuel leak. Monday's attempt was also cancelled due to escaping hydrogen, but Saturday's came on another part of the 322 foot rocket, the most powerful ever built by NASA. Can you imagine that? 322 feet. By the way, you see these things on TV, and they will not, you, you just can't grasp the scope and the scale of these things. It's just insane. I'll continue. The team tried twice to stop and restart the flow of super cold liquid hydrogen in hopes of completing the seal and ending the leak. They also flushed helium through the line, but the leak remained. Artemis, Artemis, am I saying it right the whole time? Ar yeah, Artemis. Mission manager Michael Serafin said the leak earlier this week, quote, was a manageable leak. This was not a manageable leak. NASA's Artemis 1 moon launch schedule. NASA has yet to determine a new launch window for the mission, but officials said Artemis 1 will not launch before Tuesday. When a two-week launch blackout period kicks in. Quote, We do not launch until we think it's right, said the NASA administrator, former Senator Bill Nelson. Officials will have more information early next week, said Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems Development, James Free. The rocket must be transported four miles to the vehicle assembly building rather than worked on at the launch pad, officials said Saturday afternoon. NASA currently 
has an October 3rd SpaceX launch scheduled to send a crew to the International Space Station. Free said the overlap would need to be reconciled and may put Artemis 1 launch later into October. The mission around the moon and back is expected to take 39 days. Splashdown for the Orion spacecraft has been expected for October 11th, according to NASA. Wow. So, again, this is, I know, a somewhat arguable debate about, um, you know, why we're sending money, using it for space. But I got to say again, I'm just a kid inside me. It's just in awe over these things. But, uh, you know, I can see why this podcast, you know, people roll their eyes. Like, you know, they don't really care about going to the moon and to Mars. And this wasn't a podcast to make a, a debate over it. But, you know, got to be honest in a way where, you know, we're screaming for Medicare for all in America and free um, education and all that stuff. But, you know, besides the defense budgets and all that stuff, we have a space exploration budget and we send money and we build fucking rockets. And so, I don't know. Maybe it's just me just being a little human and selfish and thinking that these things are working for us in the future. Like, if you think about the military and uh, secret stuff and eventually gets passed down to us in a more mundane form to improve our lives. I don't know. What do you want to talk about? Fucking refrigerators or microwaves, whatever. And is there that aspect there? Sure. I mean, doing tests on the International Space Station, medical things, uh, the 3D printer breakthrough thing they did where they needed a part and they sent them the data to construct it, and they constructed it on the International Space Station, things like that, you know, I got, I, I, I can see the debate, but sometimes I'm sitting here doing my thing, and I'm like, hey, you know, this is great, and I get excited, and there's a child wakes up in me, but we have real problems on Earth, and, uh, you know, so is, is it, you know, something to get excited about? For me, it is, and maybe I'll you know, live with that debate or find a good argument here and there. And there were and are some out there. I just haven't dived deep into these things in a while. It's more like these are the things that just captivate me and lift me up and, you know, and then, but then again, then my brain starts going, hey, you know, what the fuck are you doing? You know, we have people on this planet who need, you know, so I don't know. But anyway, these are the things that excite me. I want to see the, uh, what we get from the James Webb Telescope. As I said, I did that podcast already. I want to see uh, nebulas and black holes. We might even be able to catch a black hole colliding with another one in, in anticipation, not just finding the background effects. And all these things are just, like, amazing to me. And, I, you know, I, I wish there was a big excitement throughout um, the country or the world for these things, but it's a weird time, right? It's political mayhem all over the world, and fucking wars and proxy wars and it's just well people are hard out there fighting and struggling to get people you know let's let's end homelessness and hunger world hunger like so i get it and it, but i can't you know get around that fact that i look to these things for hope and you know, excitement, it just gets my uh, creativity flowing. I just love the uh, all the aspects of it. I talk to a friend all the time about these type of things, and like UFOs particularly now. I mean, we could be someone else's UFO soon. I mean, maybe we are the first civilization that is starting this. Um, there's uh, a podcast playlist I have. And in it is like the Fermi paradox and the dark forest theory. It's like a four if everybody's interested, but all of it, even just the chance that we're gonna uh, go back to the moon. Oh, but it might be fake because we know that these rockets are going up and hitting the glass dome, right? <laughs> and that the world is flat and it's on the back of a turtle, maybe? I'm not sure. But, like, you know, there are people still traveling to the ends of Antarctica and waiting to see the drop-off from the edge of the world. 
this is fucking lunacy, but, you know, I guess it's just showing, you know, here I am talking about uh, Artemis One and space exploration. I'm excited, and, and a part of me is like, hey, we got problems on Earth, and uh, as a society, are we even ready for this? I think this is the steps we take, right? This is, we align a certain amount of budget, or we allot, in, a, in that case, uh, and we do these things, and I don't know, it's still, and it doesn't feel me being honest of me with my truth over feelings thing, that I didn't mention that in this, and didn't just talk about a, um, to me, an, you know, uh, awe-inspiring event where this 222-foot-tall rocket blasts into space, goes around the moon, does its test, sends out the thing, whatever the capsule is, and this is a plan to go from here to the moon, to Mars. Oh, it just, you know, makes me so excited. And that excitement turns into a little bit of hesitation with what the fuck's going on in this country, in this world. I just don't know sometimes. I pop on these things and hi, and my editorial staff is behind the glass and looking at me and whatever the fuck I bullshit about. And I just want to have fun and just go along with it. But, you know, every day we see these fucking news. They did a Trump is raided things. And these motherfuckers got shit all over the place. And nuclear codes, whatever the fuck it is. Information. And we're all going to get excited about a rocket launch. And then it's scrapped. Uh, I can see the, you know. I can just see the mindset of people. It's just not important. And to me, I think it is. To me, I want kids be excited and get into science and physics and astrophysics and I talked to a friend like I said and one of the staple things I like to bring up is our mistakes are the solutions to the future problems meaning there are some great theoretical physicists and people like that who study the concept of space and what holds it together and just mind-blowing stuff and they kind of like, we are not built for this. We, you know, we evolved to this place, and yes, we've got wonderful things, but we might need a new generation who has a new way of thinking, and it's going to change things. So their failures are going to be the future success. So here we have a scrapped mission launch. I mean, are they learning from things? Are they finding the leak? They couldn't, it's not manageable. And again, this is like, I was excited for this. This is part of like me checking in on things and going, oh, did this happen? Is it going to happen? I love to look at those um, news things and like plan to watch an eclipse and uh, what the new James Webb telescope picture is going to look like. And it's awe inspiring to me. And I want to convey that excitement and just get everybody into this wonderful universe we live in. But we have to take care of things on Earth, on this planet, and I get that point too, so who knows. I just hope that uh, in everybody's life and whatever you're going through, looking for work, just start a new job, whatever, you're worried about conspiracies and things that are going on in the political realm and in everyday life, I still hold out the hope that we are still close to achieving what we want as humans, as a culture, society. And I think we can make it. I don't think it's as bad as it looks and the media portrays sometimes. But what do I know, right? Just a wise ass from Brooklyn, New York. Doing his podcasting on the Artemis One. Uh, like I said, go to the NASA website. I'll probably put the two links in there. I find it fascinating and or inspiring, but I can see people just find it fucking annoying. Like, you know, hey, I like your fucking podcast on the latest fucking movie or TV show. That's that Trump thing was kind of interesting. You know, but we're wasting money on this shit. And what the fuck is it going to do for us? I mean, I don't know. Is it, and it is a conspiracy with the UFO, UAP, technology, disinformation, misinformation thing. Uh, you know, I don't fucking know. Anyway, I have a ball thinking about these things, but I got to admit to being human and wondering 
about the necessities and what's needed and where the priorities are. In any case, I hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. I'll talk to you all next time. Laters.